welcome to Referencing Academy. We are discussing limits and this is the lecture part 22. I hope you have already watched part 1 to part 21. Before watching part 22, you must watch part 1 to part 21 so that you will be able to understand it quickly. Otherwise, there might be some problems. So this is a part 22 in which we are going to discuss a very specific questions related to limits. Most of the times the students confused about uh, seeing some greatest linear function in limits, some partial fractions in limits. So we are going to discuss today specifically about that kind of questions in which there is a greatest linear function has been used or partial fraction has been used. How to deal with such questions? Uh, we will focus on it today. In last class, we have discussed one question in which there was the greatest linear function and we have learned how to deal with the greatest linear function. Today I think I should uh, discuss some more questions related to greatest linear and partial fraction so that you will be familiar with this topic and with the operations, how to operate whenever there is a greatest linear function or partial fractions containing limits. So let me discuss today some more questions and uh, we are going to discuss questions related to greatest linear function, partial fractions which will be used in other algebraic function or in trigonometric function or in logarithmic function. So all kind of questions, all kind of questions related to greatest linear function and partial fractions and where there is a limit, how to deal with that kind of questions let us discuss today. So very first question I am going to take on which will be a continuation of the last video lecture where we have discussed the present their function. The very first question I am going to take on today is limit x n tends to infinity. Limit n tends to infinity. Limit n tends to infinity. Greatest linear function x plus greatest linear function of 2x plus greatest integer function of 3x plus greatest integer function of nx divided by an square right last class we had discussed one questions of this category where there was n q and something different was there so here it is an n square and how to deal with such questions let me discuss today so first of all we know what we know about the greatest integer function that greatest integer function means x is the greatest integer function which is greater than x minus 1 and less than equal to x. So similarly, using this property, I can write here all of them. Greatest integer function x is greater than x minus 1 and less than equal to 2x. So greatest integer function of 2x will be less than equal to 2x and greater than 2x minus 1. Greater than your function of 3x is less than or equal to 3x but greater than 3x minus 1. Similarly, proceeding in the same way, greatest than your function of nx will be less than or equal to nx and greater than nx minus 1. Adding all these together, what will happen? If I take common in x from all these, I will get 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. If I had minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, n times, it would be minus n. Less than, this is the function, greater than your function x, greater than your function of 2x, greater than your function of 3x, up to greater than your function of nx. And thereafter, what will happen? Again, if I would take x common, 1 plus 2 plus 3, that will come. So less than equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n, into x. You know the sum of a natural number is n into n plus 1 by 2. So x into n plus 1 into n whole divided by 2 minus n is less than equal to this is x plus 2x plus 3x like that up to nx and this is also less than equal to n into n plus 1 by 2 into x. In this question, it was given that this part of the question divided by n square. 
So I should divide both the sides by n square here and take what the limit to be taken? Limit n tends to infinity. So if I would take limit n tends to infinity, and um, what will happen then? Try to understand. Limit n tends to infinity, n can be taken common. So n square plus 1 plus 1 by n into x whole divided by n square minus n divided by n square is less than question why there x plus 2x plus 3x up to nx divided by n square limit n tends to infinity is less than or equal to n into n square into 1 plus 1 by n into x divided by n square and here also limit n tends to infinity if you do like this, what I did here that I have taken n common n into n plus 1 by 2 I have taken n common and what is left there 2 is left there, so 2 will be there also, 2 will be there also right, so we got n into n plus 1 by 2 are there if I would have taken n common then 1 plus 1 by n will left and outside n makes it n square now n square, n square cancel here n and n cancel so what will happen if n tends to infinity 1 by n tends to 0 if when n tends to infinity then 1 by n tends to 0 and then what will happen 1 plus 0 into x by 2 minus 0 because 1 by n tends to 0 is greater than x limit n tends to infinity greatest in their function x plus 2x plus up to nx whole divided by n square and less than equal to limit n tends to infinity again n square n square cancel 1 plus 0 into x by 2 so finally it will come like x by 2 greater than limit n tends to infinity greater than your function x plus 2x plus up to nx divided by n square is less than or equal to x by 2 we have discussed sandwich theorem and this is what it is greater than x by 2 and less than or equal to x by 2 it means finally we can write limit n tends to infinity greatest linear function x greatest linear function 2x plus greatest linear function of nx whole divided by n square is nothing else but x by 2 and this is the answer of this question let me explain once again this is the question and we have to deal how to deal with greater linear function we will start from basic definition what is the basic definition that greatest linear function x by definition we can write here that greatest linear function is nothing else but it is greater than less than or equal to x either it would be less than or it would be equal to but it must be greater than x minus 1 so I have written here greater than your function x is greater than x minus 1 and less than or equal to x similarly 2x can be written as less than or equal to 2x but greater than or equal to, greater than 2x minus 1 in the similar pattern I can write all those things on adding this all because we have one addition of all these functions so after adding all these we will find here that x 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n how it will come because if once you take x common from this here 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n this will come minus 1 minus 1 become minus 2 minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 become minus 3 because it is a 3 times similarly minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 n times become minus n and it is greater than this is a question this part is a question part again if I would have taken x common 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n will come now in question it is a demand that we need n square denominator so we should divide throughout by denominator by n square and now we have to take limit n tends to infinity here n into n plus 1 if I can take n common from this it would be n square and here what is left 1 plus 1 by n so this is what left here 1 plus 1 by n into x divided by 2 and n square n square n square cancel 
here n divided by n square, so 1 and 1 and cancel, and similarly, other part will happen. Now, when n tends to infinity, 1 by n tends to 0. So, what is left here? 8, 1 plus 0 into x by 2, that is x by 2, this has become 0. This question lies greater than x by 2, but less than or equal to x by 2. It means it is nothing. By Sandwich theorem, we can say, what is that? x by 2. So, value of that limit would be x by 2. I hope you got it. Right? So, let us consider some other questions. Second question. In second question, what is the difference? And why is this so? If there is a partial fraction instead of all those greatest integer functions, there was partial fraction, then what will happen? Suppose if there is partial fraction, question number second, instead of this, there is a partial fraction of x, partial fraction of 2x, and partial fraction of 3x like this and partial fraction of nx right so this is the partial fraction of nx this is the question now what to do so to solve this question what is partial fraction let me explain this what is partial fraction x is any thing any number then x can have two part one is integral part and another one is partial fraction this is called partial fraction where this fraction has value greater than or equal to 0 but less than 1 for example if i have 3.7 x is 3.7 then this 3.7 can be written as 3 plus 0 0.7 this can be written as 3 plus 0 0.7 and 3 is what integral part of x and 0 0.7 is what fractional part of x Got it? It means whenever there is an x, then we can write this integral part plus fraction part. This fraction part can be 0 as well. For example, if I would take x is equal to 4, then here what is integral part? 4 can be written as 4 plus 0. So integral part is 4, but fraction part is 0. So here greatest integer is 4, but fraction part is 0. So fraction part can have minimum value 0 and maximum can be less than 1 not exactly 1 because 1 is an integral part it would be always less than 1 so fractional part would be lies between 0 to 1 now what to do is we will uh, look for this question and in this question I can write each fractional part as like integral part minus what is this x minus integral part. Each fraction part can be written as x minus integral part. x minus integral part. Fraction part of 2x can be written as 2x minus integral part of 2x. Fraction part of 3x can be written as 3x minus integral part of 3x and so on. Fraction part of nx can be written as nx minus integral part of nx. Now, if I sum up all these then what will happen? Integral part of x plus fractional part of 2x plus fractional part of 3x till fractional part of nx will be equal to what? If I would take again x common, what will happen? This will be n into n plus 1 by 2 into x. If I would take x common, 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n, and what is the sum of first and natural number? n into n plus 1 by 2. And thereafter, what is left? Integral part of x plus integral part of 2x plus integral part of 3x plus integral part of nx. Right? That will left in bracket because I have taken negative sign common. So all the factors inside bracket would be positive. Now, think about this question. This fractional part divided by n square. So again in the similar fashion, I need to divide the whole thing by n square and take limit n tends to infinity. Limit n tends to infinity, this plus this fractional part plus up to nx 
fraction part divided by n square will enable us to write here limit n tends to infinity n into n plus 1 by 2 into x minus integral part of x plus integral part of 2x plus integral part of nx whole divided by n square right now this is what comes so for this question what will come here try to understand whole divided by n square this is whole divided by n square so n square can be written twice even you can write here n square is complete one because we divide all the things by n square now what will come limit n tends to infinity n if i would take common n square plus 1 plus 1 by n into x by 2 whole divided by n square minus limit n tends to infinity greatest integer function x plus 2x plus up to nx whole divided by n square here n square n square cancel what is left here 1 plus 0 into x by 2 and in previous question we had done this x by 2 was the answer so x by 2 minus x by 2 what will come 0 so answer of this question would be 0 I hope you got it right now समझ में आया पक्का ओके ठीक है तो चलिए दूसरा क्वेश्चन कर लेते हैं एक क्वेश्चन और करते हैं और ये मैं डस्टर उठा के इसको थोड़ा मिटा दूँ मिटाने के बाद तीसरा क्वेश्चन देखता हूँ जो ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक फंक्शन है और ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक फंक्शन में ग्रेटेस्ट इंटीजर फंक्शन का कैसे इस्तेमाल होता है या पासिव फ्रैक्शन का वो हम सीखते राइट सो let us learn now how to use fractional part in how to use fractional part in trigonometric function. So question is third question. Third question is limit x tends to one x sine fractional part of x divided by x minus one. Usually whenever I get this question in the class age then the students become very surprised how to deal with such question because they have not learned sin fractional part of sin of fractional part of x they learn sin 30 degree sin pi by 6 sin 5 pi by 12 with some angles they understand that sin will operate on some angles and it is a fractional part of x which is very difficult for them to understand what to do with this question that is why I am here I am telling this how to deal with this this situation can be taken by using this x can be also understand like what is x fraction part of x you understand that x minus integral part of x fractional part of x can be written as x minus integral part of x let me write here I put x is equal to if I put here x is equal to 1 plus h put x is equal to 1 plus h when x tends to 1 then h tends to 0 so each y x is replaced by 1 plus x so what will happen fractional part of 1 plus x h is equal to what I can write here 1 plus h minus integral part of 1 plus h integral part of 1 plus something h is something slightly greater than 0 and slightly greater than 0 slightly greater than 0 that is positive number 1 plus slightly positive integral part of that would be 1 so 1 minus 1 is h so fraction part of 1 plus h is equal to h right Similarly, so what will happen? If I would write right hand limit, then what will happen? Limit h tends to 0. In the state of x, I can write 1 plus h. And sine fractional part of x, that is 1 fractional part of 1 plus h, that is h. Divided by 1 plus h minus 1, 1, 1 cancel. Limit h tends to 0, 1 plus h, sine h by h. You know limit h tends to 0 sin h by h is what? 1. So what will happen? 
limited extends to 0, 1 plus x into 1, and if x tends to 0, what will come? 1. Now, think about LHS. If I would take limit h tends to 0 and LHS, that is what I can do, put x is equal to 1 minus h. When x tends to 1, h tends to 0. So LHL will come like h tends to 0, limit h tends to 0, sin fractional part of 1 minus h divided by and 1 minus h also because of x 1 minus h into fraction sign fraction part of 1 minus h fraction part of 1 minus h divided by 1 minus h minus 1 1 1 cancel now it will come like 1 minus h and fraction part of sign 1 minus h 1 minus h this is a function of sign and everybody knows the function of sine, the value of sine function has certain limits, certain boundary. It oscillates between minus 1 to 1. Sine 1 minus h, if anything is there, 1 minus h, it oscillates between minus 1 to 1. Maximum value can be 1, minimum value can be minus 1. So, that will be a finite value. Here, h becoming 0, 1 minus 0 is 1, that is also finite. Finite multiply by finite is finite, but here it will be 0. So something divided by 0 is minus infinity. Left hand limit and right hand limit do not exist and therefore, what will be answer? If there is an option like 1, b minus 1, c 0, d none of these, then what will be answer? None of these. Limit does not exist. Right now? Or even in the option it can be written that limit does not exist. Right now? So that kind of answer is possible for this type of question. I hope you got it. What to do? Let me remind once again. Limit x tends to 1. x sine fraction part of x. In question it is written this is a fraction part of x. If I can write here. If this is fractional part of x fractional part of x then evaluate this this is the question so fractional part of x can be written as x minus integral part of x x minus integral this is the basic thing which you have to understand x is equal to 1 plus h if I can write and limit x tends to 1 then h must tends to 0 now in place of x, if I can write 1 plus h, so fractional part of 1 plus h is h only because 1 is already integral part and h is a fraction part. So I can write. But even though to understand this clearly, we can write here x that is 1 plus h minus greatest integral part of 1 plus h. 1 plus h is 1 and 1 plus h minus 1 is h. So fractional part of that thing is sin h. In place of this, I can write h and therefore sin h and 1 plus h minus 1 that is h sin h by h1 so 1 plus h and h tends to 0 so 1 is left left hand limit right hand limit exists and it is equal to 1 but left hand limit do not exist and therefore what is the answer answer is limit does not exist here LHL is not equal to RHL and therefore limit does not exist Right now, limit does not exist. Right? So, you got it? Okay. Now, let us do some other question. Have another question. Limit x tends to infinity. Question number 4. Log x to the power n. Limit x tends to infinity. Log x to the power n. Minus greatest integer function of x. Divided by greatest integer function of x. 
this is the question right limit n tends to infinity and n tends to infinity or x tends to infinity it can be anything x tends to infinity then what will happen x to the power n minus greater than z function x divided by greater than z function x to solve such question this is a logarithmic function which includes greatest integer function right now logarithmic function which includes greatest integer function so here it is clearly written in the question where this say denotes greatest integer function greatest integer function which is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to x meaning it is equal to x may be written like this to solve such question what to do first of all i can write here limit n tends to infinity log m to the power n is n log m minus greatest integer function x i can separate it like this so what will happen this will come up like limit n tends to infinity n log x divided by greatest integer x minus 1 i can write this is equation 1 let me write here this is equation number 1 right 1 to deal with such question what to do first of all i can take one auxiliary function where limit n tends to limit n x tends to sorry this was x sorry i am forgetting this x tends to limit x tends to infinity then what will happen n log x divided by x if it was like this think about this log x by x simply simple function i can take auxiliary function when x tends to infinity log infinity is also infinity and it is infinity so this is in form of infinity by infinity would you be agree to apply a hospital rule yes na okay so we can apply here l hospital rule and what will happen x tends to infinity log x is 1 by x and derivative of x is 1 so what is that limit x tends to infinity 1 by x and when x tends to infinity 1 by x would be 0 and n multiply by anything is also equal to 0 so in fact limit n tends to infinity n log x by x is also zero but here this is not x what is that this is greatest integer function of x it was not x but it is a greatest integer function of x so what to do let me remind you of you again greatest integer function x is greater than x minus 1 but less than equal to x so 1 by x is greater than x and less than x minus 1 by x. if i make the reciprocal sign then what will happen the inequality sign will change 1 upon x minus 1 right na inequality sign will change if i multiply log both the sides log is something positive so that is log is defined for positive value greatest integer function of x and log x divided by x minus 1 so log x lies between this if i would take the limit n x tends to infinity then what will happen now if i would take limit x tends to infinity x tends to infinity then log x by x is less than 1 upon log x by greatest integer function x log x by greatest integer function x is less than limit n tends to x tends to infinity log x upon x minus 1 and here is also limit x tends to infinity we have seen here that limit x tends to infinity log x by x is zero nothing else but zero we have seen this na limit x tends to infinity log x by x is zero so this is what zero and less than equal to limit x tends to infinity log x upon greatest integer function x and this will be also zero so it is